Coming up next on Know Your Legislators, you'll hear from two members of the Florida House of Representatives, John Wood and Neil Cumbie. They'll talk about how they got involved in the political process, as well as some of the issues and accomplishments important to them. It's time for Know Your Legislators, where we keep you updated on the people who make up your Polk County legislative delegation. And it starts right now. I'm Mike Moore. Welcome to another edition of Know Your Legislators. If you don't know a lot about your legislators or the legislative process, then this is the show for you. We'll show you how the state government process works and impacts us here in Polk County. Now, in just a few minutes, Hetty Weddington, my co-host, will join us. In fact, every show, Hetty sits down and talks with two of the people who make up your Polk County legislative delegation. In just a little bit in the show, Hetty will be talking with State Representative John Wood. We'll get his thoughts on the recent legislative session and the direction he believes the state is going. But we begin our show with Representative Neil Cumby. Cumby, a name that's very familiar here in Polk County, is a Republican, and he represents the 39th House District, which includes the northern portion of Polk County, as well as parts of northwestern Osceola County. Cumby is currently serving his first term in the House. He was elected in 2012. But he is certainly no stranger to the political process, serving four terms as a Polk County Commissioner. He was first elected back in 1988, then re-elected in 92, 96, and 2000. But there's much more to learn about Representative Cumbie, so let's move to the other side of our studio, where he's already ready with Hetty. Well, hello, Representative Cumbie. I am so glad to see you here today. Um, it's really a great honor to be able to sit and talk to you about your background and some things that the folks in Polk County may or may not know about you. I know that you are many generations of farmer, uh, rancher, agriculture, and somehow there in the midst of, of all of your work with the land, which I know you love the land, and raising a family, you decided at some point that you also needed to give time to public service, which I believe originally was County Commission. Would you like to tell me a little bit about your background and what was that original instinct to tell you to, to run for public office? Well, I guess there were a lot of uh, reasons that I was interested in in politics. It started in an early age. My um, my dad's cousin actually would have been my uh, the generation of my grandfather, Al Dean Cumbie, was on the County Commission in Polk County for 16 years. Uh, mm -hmm. Died uh, in an automobile accident on Saddle Creek Road when I was a, I was fairly young, I think it was in the early 70s, and uh, so th that was an inspiration for me. I grew up just down the road uh, from, from Aldine, and mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I'd like to do this someday, but my dad and my mother were always interested in politics. Most of their interests seemed to be at the federal level, looking at Washington and mm -hmm. presidential politics, and uh, we, my dad, we were in the dairy business when I was real young, uh, along with his mom and dad. And so they got out of the dairy business and went to work for Lakeland, mm -hmm. uh, the Lakeland Police Department, was there for several years. But meanwhile, had started uh, a sod business in landscaping, mostly sod. And uh, we grew some out north of town and uh, kind of did it from wholesale to retail, mm -hmm. uh, grow it, put it on the trucks, take it to uh, mostly South Lakeland, where yeah. the development was at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, every night at our house was uh, a board meeting. That was the dinner table. <laughs> so I had to find out what was going on. Uh, and at uh, that particular uh, time of day, find out what was happening in Washington or maybe in Tallahassee or maybe in Bartow. Uh, don't know that uh, you know, followed the city of Lakeland stuff that much, but mm -hmm. we got our news from the ledger like everybody else right. uh, locally subscribed to that. So there was just an awful lot of discussion. And I think that, uh, most of it was, uh, what are they doing to us today? Right. And uh, yeah. that was kind of the theme, it seemed like. But uh, growing up, I uh, had some folks that uh, influenced me that thought that, uh, you know, I should, uh, you know, someday you should run for office, probably right. because of Aldine. Uh, going back even further, uh, 
one of the uh, earliest settlers in Polk County, I think was, I've been told was the third registered settler, uh, was uh, Silas McClellan, and who was way back great-great-great-grandpa, uh, right. and he was the county really? coroner. I'm not really sure what qualified him to be the county coroner. I don't know if he had any medical training at all, or if he just looked at somebody and said, yeah, that's a, that's a stab wound, or that's a gunshot, or uh, had a little checklist, and yeah. made everybody fit into that. So he was the county coroner, somebody else was the sheriff, and somebody else really? was the judge. I don't really remember. Uh, so we uh, we started early here, and and again people were saying you know that uh, you should you should think about doing this. And again because I think Al Dean in the years that he served on the county commission, I had a teacher in high school, Steve Kovacs, who's still around, and I hope he's doing well. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was an old Marine, came back to uh, Lakeland High School, and yeah. and I uh, taught government civics uh, there. And uh, he was always encouraging me, you need to get involved in politics. So we actually had a, a week at Lakeland High School where we had a student government uh, group, had lections in the classroom, and then we went over to City Hall, the city of Lakeland, and spent a week over there with the staff, mayor, city manager. Bob Yuki was the uh, city manager at the time, and I was elected the mayor of Lakeland for the student government folks. <laughs> and we had a great time. We had a mock city commission meeting. So I always had this idea that, you know, yeah. one day I'll run for office. And there just uh, came a time when some folks came and said, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you go out and run? And I'm like, I'm only 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And they're like, ah, yeah, but we'll help you. You know, yeah. we're interested in, in getting yeah. behind you and, and having you run for the commission. And I did, and fortunately, uh, uh, was able to get enough votes to win the election. Right. And it's been, uh, you know, an honor uh, that time and in mm -hmm. three more uh, elections after that mm -hmm. uh, to get reelected. There's, um, it, it's kind of hard to describe. There's, there's, you know, wins and losses. There's a right. lot of success that, uh, you know, you can look back on and think, you know, I had an impact on right. this. But it really, uh, you can't do any of it alone. You certainly, you got to have the, the exactly. voter support. But the staff support and just folks that, you know, who never get any credit that have mm -hmm. ideas and and uh, help uh, sell an idea and encourage mm -hmm. you and others to to kind of go in a direction. So while it may look like it's an individual effort at times, believe me, it's not. There's an awful right. lot of uh, folks that right. help you get there, and and they don't get much credit. Well, I you know I know that your public service was for many years. Uh, with the county commissioner, some as a county commissioner, somewhere around 16 years, and I know that also uh, water um, and the protection of our most precious asset there in water was a big uh, uh, issue for you. So I know you also served uh, on Southwest Florida Management District. And I, I say Swift Mud usually. Governing board. So governing board, but at some point you made the decision to move further into politics and run for state office. What was it that brought you to that decision after already serving so much of your life in, in public service already on a county level? Well, I guess when I uh, was elected to my fourth term in 2000, the voters had approved term limits that, that same election for county commissioners. So I said, you know, I won't run again. Although I would have been eligible to run again in 2004 for a four-year term, I decided then and there that I wouldn't do it. I said, you know, voters want term limits, so I'm not going to do it again. And uh, and I thought, okay, I'm done with politics. I'll, you know, go do something else. Right. Well, there was a vacancy on the uh, governing board, the Swift Mud governing board. And the folks, friends down here at the county, asked me if I would be willing to serve. Right. The governing board is a volunteer position. You don't get paid for it. Right. You meet once a month, and occasionally uh, there's a few meetings in between right. along the way. But uh, and it's important work, and the district does important work. You know, trying to protect the resource and manage the resource. And without a doubt, their their scope of duties and responsibilities have expanded over the years. And uh, it's, it's important, I think board members, uh, you know, serve a very important function, but it really is limited, uh, you know, to water and environmental protection. And I think that uh, along around 2008, I didn't mm -hmm. think things were going very well mm -hmm. uh, economically, and I, I right. think you can go back and look, and it was a pretty tough time here. Right. And I felt like that uh, we needed to do more to try to, to help folks. Uh, we needed regulatory reform, we needed to try to remove barriers and impediments for people right. and try to make a living. Right. And uh, so I got interested at that point in running for the legislature. 
some folks had asked me to run in 2008, and, and I'm like, ah, I'm kind of done with this. But uh, so I started you know, thinking about it and thinking, okay, maybe I you know, could mm -hmm. help. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I could bring a, a, you know, some ideas for reform that would help people. Right. So uh, you know, decided, okay, I'm going to run for this. And it's been a great experience. Uh, it's frustrating at times because it's a lot different than a county commission. When you have um, you know, a, a five-member body like the county commission, if you get two other people to agree with you, you can paint the whole county red. If you can find enough right. red paint, you just need right. two other votes. Absolutely. Uh, when you get uh, into uh, a mm -hmm. group of 120 plus 40 and a governor, it gets extremely hard to get anything done. And when you look at the state of Florida, the size, we're now the third largest state in the, in the country. When you look at um, you know, how diverse we are, you can understand why it is hard to get anything done. And I think the bigger, you know, our state uh, gets, the more diverse it gets, and that's, you know, uh, I think invariably true. You look at California, you look at Texas, both very diverse states. So it's uh, it's hard to accomplish something there. So that makes it uh, something you got to learn to deal with. You got to learn that you're not going to win every time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I I think you just you know accept that and you keep working with folks and trying to reach an agreement and, and, and compromise where you can and hopefully uh, you come away with stuff that uh, will be good for your district and good for the people you're representing. Right. So you are close to halfway through your eight-year term. Um, tell us very briefly, have you met the goals that you set out to meet? Do you still have some things in mind? And then would you please at, at that point kind of go into where your district office is located and uh, who your staff is for me? Yeah, the, uh, the first year was very frustrating. Uh, I really thought that, uh, you know, I would get some things accomplished that I had been talking about for years that people thought uh, was a good idea. And it was about transparency. It was about accountability. And I met all kinds of resistance. Uh, I got very frustrated toward the end of the session when I thought, okay, I came here to accomplish something and it's not working. I think there's a lot of people that share that feeling and that experience. Uh, and again, it's something you just have to get used to. But there are things that I'm working on. And this past year, I uh, asked uh, to be moved over into the ag and natural resources area. Uh, really, that's you know what I know you know the most about and what I feel comfortable with. So I've moved over there. We've got some things we're trying to do with agritourism. Uh, it seems to be uh, really uh, has a lot of appeal to people right now. Mm -hmm. We want to support that, uh, uh, tourism generally, but certainly agritourism as well. So we're trying to get some things done uh, to protect those folks and promote that, that segment right. of the tourism industry. And um, there's some criminal justice things we uh, might want to look at, but I, uh, I, I you know, have got a long list and, right. and when you're in the house you can only file six bills so you have right. to be particular right. uh, and use a little bit of discretion because if something's not going to stand a chance of uh, of getting anywhere you know mm -hmm. you don't want to waste a bill slot on that. Right. The Senate's a little different they have unlimited number of bills and, right. and uh, but we're we're restricted by what we can do but it's a it's a great opportunity uh, it's the people you meet there mm -hmm. even the the ones that are you know completely different uh, in philosophy and ideology is still an awful lot of fun and experience right. that you just, it, you know, uh, no other place could that ever happen to people, right. it seems like. But we've got a great uh, uh, facility here locally that uh, is set up to serve people that centered in the, uh, uh, you know, geographically and almost the population center of District 39 in, in uh, Auburndale. Right. And I have uh, Lori Allen as my district district secretary, and mm -hmm. she's there mm -hmm. uh, most of the time. And when uh, we're in Tallahassee, and and also Barbara Blassen Game is my legislative assistant, and right. she is also there, uh, and also goes to Tallahassee. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your really busy schedule to come and visit with us today. It's really important for the people of Polk County to know their legislators a little bit better and a little bit more on the personal side than just what they do in, in Tallahassee. So thank you so very much for coming in today. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right, thanks, Hattie. Representative Comby has a very interesting local family history and it goes all the way back to the early days of Polk County. Now, if you'd like to contact his district office, it's very easy. 
you can call his office, which is located in Auburndale. That number is 863-968-5666. Again, that number is 863-968-5666. All right, coming up later in the program, Hetty will join me for a segment we like to call Civics 101. This is where we answer your questions about the state legislature. But today, she's going to give us a little quick recap of the 2015 legislative session and all the bills that were filed. But first, we want to hear from our next guest, State Representative John Wood. Wood is a Republican, and he represents the 41st House District, which is situated in the northeast part of Polk County. Cities in his district include Winter Haven, Lake Alfred, Haines City, and Davenport, just to name a few. Now, Wood was first elected to the House of Representatives back in 2008 and re-elected in 2012, which means because of term limits, he is presently serving in his final term. Wood is also an attorney, a realtor, and he has a very clear vision, not only for his district and the county, but the state of Florida. So once again, let's send you across the studio where Hetty is with Representative John Wood. Good morning, Representative Wood. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. I know that you are a true Polk Countyan. You were born in Polk County. And I know that for decades, you and your family have been very instrumental in the growth and economic development of Winter Haven and the surrounding areas. I also know you're an Eagle Scout and you are very supportive of all of the youth organizations such as the Boy Scouts of America and uh, the Polk Education Foundation, among many others. But tell us a little bit about what were the factors that made you decide to run for an elected office at this time of your life? Well, Hetty, uh, you know, my uh, foundation is something that I share with uh, many other citizens. Mm -hmm. And that's a deep respect for the uh, divine gifts from our Creator, uh, that of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. And that foundation is uh, uh, the basis for my uh, uh, principles uh, in terms of what I think is best uh, for our uh, uh, society. And that is one of, first of all, constitutional government. Yes. And that constitutional government should be governed by the principles of limited government, uh, free markets, and federalism. Mm -hmm. And by federalism, I mean the proper relationship under our U.S. Constitution between the federal government and the states. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so with that thought in mind, those thoughts were what led you to think that you could better serve by running for an elected office and, and it would give you the platform that you needed to further you know what what it is you'd like to see absolutely you know uh, public service is a, a great honor mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I've taken uh, very seriously um, and uh, it's something that uh, I would encourage uh, many other citizens to uh, consider um, I'm a big believer in the in term limits mm -hmm. um, I think it gives an opportunity for uh, different ideas to uh, to come forward uh, in our uh, elected representatives uh, it's something that's in the Constitution of the state of Florida, and it's something that I really think that we need in the federal Constitution. Yes. Um, you know, our federal Constitution limits the most important elective office in the land, the presidency of the United States, and I think that uh, it would be appropriate to have those same limitations uh, both on our um, elected federal representatives, the House of Representatives right. and the Senate, and perhaps even the Supreme Court justices, because as uh, recent uh, events show, Mm -hmm. uh, that branch of government such has such a large impact on our society. Yes, I, I agree with you totally. I know that you are getting close to the end of your, your term, which is eight years, and I know that during your time with the House of Representatives, you've been very active with uh, several of the committees, uh, the Insurance Committee, the uh, Health Care Committee, and a lot of the budgetary process. I know that you are a fiscal conservative. Have you accomplished some of the things that you really set out to accomplish? And what do you have left with one term, I believe, left that you'd like to try to finish up before your eight years is up? Well, you know, uh, being a member of the House of Representatives is definitely a uh, team effort. Uh, 
Um, you have to work together with uh, everyone in uh, the legislature. You have to work with the governor to accomplish uh, legislation. Um, as far as fiscal policy, um, we, we set uh, the budget uh, in the legislature and then the governor decides uh, how good a budget he wants it to be and uh, has the line item veto. And I think all of those checks and balances are very important. And really, looking back on my uh, time in the legislature, uh, I'm particularly proud of the policies that we've adopted here in the state of Florida, particularly since the election of uh, Governor Scott in 2010. Um, Florida is doing very well economically. We now are the third largest state. Um, our policies uh, promote economic growth. And I think that a good economy is the best social program for our citizens. So I'm proud of what we've done. As far as this last term, um, I'm looking forward to just continuing those type of policies that, uh, we've, um, that we've instituted here in Florida. We have a very strong uh, fiscal policy uh, with an excellent credit rating in our state. We have a very reasonable tax policy that uh, promotes economic growth. And uh, people around the United States are recognizing that because they continue to move here and, and, and that's helping uh, Florida's economy to continue to grow. Uh, I also know that you have great interest in Article 5, correct? Yes. And Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Article 5 <laughs> is found in our um, federal constitution. And uh, so far in the history of the United States, uh, the United States Constitution has always been amended by amendments being um, um, proposed by the, the Federal Congress and then, as our Constitution requires, ratified by three-fourths of the states. The founders, when they wrote the Constitution, uh, were concerned that uh, perhaps one day the federal government would become so powerful that we needed an alternative process to uh, assert um, the, the correct balance of power between the, uh, between the states and the federal government. And that's what Article 5 promotes. Article 5 is a way for the states to call a constitutional convention to allow um, amendments to be proposed. Um, I think the one that's the most important in everybody's minds around the United States is a balanced budget for, yes. the, uh, for the federal government. Yes. We need a governor on uh, the spending in, in Washington so that we can have some adult conversations up there. Because Florida has a balanced budget uh, that we have to work with, I think that Florida seems to be in better shape financially than some of the other states who don't have that in their constitution. Am I correct with that? Yes, you know, Florida, uh, it's a requirement of our uh, Florida Constitution that we, that we pass a balanced budget every year here in Florida. And I think that that requirement it just makes so much common sense. It's something that we all live by in our lives. We all know that uh, we have to make adjustments um, when, um, when, when our income goes down. Um, we have to make savings for the future. We have to plan for the future. And it's worked very well in Florida. And I think that it's something that many people in this country um, would like to see uh, the federal government adhere to. Uh, in fact, um, the people of Florida uh, voted overwhelmingly uh, for it in a straw ballot in the 2010 election. We, the, the legislature placed that on the ballot and it was uh, 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 approved by over 70% of the Florida voters. So I think it's a, to uh, a, a, a concept that is um, gonna be adopted um, and I'm, uh, along with a lot of other people, are working hard to see if we can um, make it happen. We've um, passed um, um, the balanced budget resolution here in Florida calling for the convention. Uh, we've gone uh, very far here in Florida. We, we have a statute that um, um, uh, sets forth how the uh, legislature will control its delegates. So it's, it's a great effort and I'm proud to be part of it. I am so pleased that you joined us today. I took personal privilege in being able to do this with you today because I have worked with you and I believe you are a true statesman and you have been such an asset to the state of Florida. 
I would you tell us a little bit about your district office and where it's located and who your staff is, please? Sure. Uh, my office is located in downtown Winter Haven uh, in the Beamer Building, which is a, a, an old building in Winter Haven that's been restored. It's a very lovely uh, place for my staff. And my legislative assistant is Brittany Hoag. Okay. And my, uh, uh, my district secretary or district assistant is uh, Renee Willis. And they are always available to help citizens um, get input as to their state government. And we always look forward to receiving uh, calls or emails uh, from, our, from our constituents. Well, thank you again so much for joining us this morning. And we really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. All right, thanks, Hetty. Another great interview with Representative Wood. Now, if you'd like to contact his office, it's very easy. You can call his district office directly, which is located in Winter Haven. And that number is 863-298-5300. That's 863-298-5300. All right, it's time for me to come over here and join Hetty for what I like to call Civics 101. Hetty, hi. Great job Thank with you. those interviews. It's Thank always, you. I love listening to what they, how they get involved, and very fascinating. The last time you were here for Civics 101, we learned that really the legislator has two constitutional responsibilities. Right. And uh, and so, looking back at what they've done, tell me about how that played out here recently. Okay, I'll do that. And you're right, they do. They have the responsibility of a budget every every year. Mm -hmm and they have the responsibility of redistricting every 10 year. Okay. But besides that, they are allowed during the 60 day session to file legislation that either creates new laws or does away with current statutes or it tweaks the laws that we currently have on the books. Right. I know many years ago, back in the early 90s, mm -hmm. when the Speaker of the House at that time decided they needed to look at some of the laws that had been on the books for years and right. do away with them. One of them was that you uh, couldn't drive a covered wagon on a two-rutted road. Oh, we can't do that? We can't do that oh, anymore. Okay. So they did away with that. Okay. But in all reality, the House members, all 120 of them, are allowed six bills per session, and that depends on the speaker. Some speakers have had only four and some have had eight. The senators, and there's only 40 of them, they can file as many bills as they want. If you have a senator that wants to file 100 pieces of legislation, they can, they can do that. Right. But ultimately, in the end, there has to be a companion bill for every House bill and Senate bill. So that kind of limits the number of Senate bills there are. And usually in any given session, there are somewhere around 2,000 pieces of legislation wow. that are actually filed. Now this last year for the 2015 session, out of the give or take 2,000 pieces of legislation, there were 231 bills that were presented to the governor for okay. him to either veto, sign into law, or let become law on its own. Oh, okay. Out of the 231 that were presented to him, 224 became law and he vetoed seven. Wow. I don't okay. know how in the world she remembers all these numbers and that's amazing. Anyway, that's why I love Civics 101. That's why I love Hetty. She does a great job. Hetty, thanks again. You're welcome. I look forward to when we do another show. We'll catch up with two more of our legislators. And Absolutely. of course, we like you joining us as well. So until next time, take care. That's my dad. In this journey, we all have a role. Every life counts on you knowing yours.